Hello everyone, I hope today finds you well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. It's beautiful weather here for September. It's sun shining, a little bit hot for this redhead, but it's still beautiful out there. But it's too warm to garden. So I thought I would come along and create an off the cuff card. So what I've got is I've got a piece of Pink Frog Smooth card and it's 300 GSM and I've cut this piece of card five and a half inches square. I've then cut a black mat five and three quarter inches square just so that I've got my mat and then I've cut a white card blank all from the same card Pink Frog and I've cut this six and a half inches square. So the card mat, six and a half inches square. The piece that I'm working on is five and a half inches square. Now what I've done is I've cut another piece five and a half inches square, and then I have cut a square piece of card four inches square. And what I've done is I've cut that out of the card. So the reason I've cut it the same size as the card base is then it covers it up for me so that I can just work through that aperture. So that's my card blank that's five and a half inches. I've then cut a four inch piece of white card. I've drawn around it and then I've cut out to create an aperture. Now I've purposely just done it by eye because I don't necessarily want it bang in the center. So I've sort of done it by eye so that means it's a little bit more random. I don't measure. So I just like the fun of creating. So what I'm going to do now is on that square, I'm just going to just sort of distress some of the edges. Now, I, some, I know some people get very stressed if you use the edges of scissors. As far as I'm concerned, you know, it's not dangerous. Um, as long as you're just careful. If you've got your distressing tools, that's great. But because I'm on a YouTube channel, I just need to reiterate that you need to be careful when using scissors, if they're sharp and you're distressing edges. So I use them, they work perfectly, no problem at all. But you have to be careful because you don't want to be slipping and then cut your hand. So just, I'm distressing these edges just so that my square is a little distressed. <laughs> a little bit like me. There we go. And let's just rub all those little bits off there. So just give it a little bit of a rub, just so that you get rid of any loose bits. Now, the advantage of that is I can place that because it's the same size as my card. So I can place that just onto the card like so. Now you're used to me using inks, so I thought we'd, I've got other products as well. So I'm just reaching for my kitchen roll. So let's just grab a piece of kitchen roll. You can tell it's going to get a bit messy if Tracy reaches for the kitchen roll that she can't tear. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Distress Oxide sprays. If you haven't got sprays, just use your inks or use your reinkers and create your own spray. There's always ways around, but I'm going to use my sprays. I've got them, so I want to use them. Now, it's always better to spray inside a box because that prevents your area becoming mucky. Now, if I spray this in a box, you can't see what I'm doing. So, hence, I'm spraying just onto some kitchen roll. But if you spray into a box, you alleviate the um, problem of having the bloom that sprays out. Just get a little bit more. There we go. Just place that over there. So I'm placing it on kitchen roll so that you can see everything I'm doing. I've got frayed burlap distress oxide spray. And I'm just going to shake that from side to side, activate that ball bearing to mix. Because when they're standing on the shelf, they just settle. So we're just giving them a little, 
a little mix, but I'm not mixing them up. I'm not shaking the bottle up and down. I'm shaking it side to side. Just helps so that you don't get too much of that spray in the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my spray and just add some of the colour. And what I mean by the bloom, this is like the bloom, the overspray. You could have another card, another piece of card on here, and then you'd catch that overspray. And then what I'm going to do is just spritz that with water. So that is just the overspray. So if you've got another piece of card, then place that on the side and you can catch that. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to use some salvage patina. Now, I really feel like a vintage. Can you see it? I'm only pressing on this one very lightly. I pressed quite heavily with the salvage patina. And I'm, I'm in the mood for a little bit of vintage this time. So I quite fancy that. So I'm just going to let it do its thing just for a little bit. So just spritz with water and I'm just spritzing with a few blobs of water just very lightly. And the reason I'm letting that sit is the frayed burlap, when you let it sit, when you've spritzed with water, you'll get some tinges of bluey grey that come through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this from a distance because I don't want to push that colour all over the card I just want to dry it where it is you can dab it if you wish but I'm just going to dry that where that is so I'm holding the heat tool quite high up so that you don't think I've you know lost the plot why is she holding it so high up now your aperture is going to bend you're heating it, it that's what it does it's going to bend. So I'm just holding it quite high up. Don't, don't put your fingers underneath your heat tool like I often do and then, you know, you burn your fingers. Now normally I will say to you, allow that to dry naturally because the colours are then richer and deeper, which they are if you don't dry with the heat tool. But this is enough of, effect, uh, enough of an effect, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm just making sure that this is perfectly dry. And as I'm drying, and I did spritz with water, as I'm drying that stops it reacting any further because I'm drying it, I'm forced drying it. If you allow it to dry naturally, it continues to react with that moisture, with that water. So you'll get a slightly different look, maybe slightly richer, but this is absolutely fine for what I want to create. But it's important that I tell you what happens if you do something completely different. Just a little bit up there that's still wet. But what you've got is you've got then a lovely aperture that's slightly distressed, not bang in the centre either. But also you've got this piece that you can then use in another project, which I think, you know, we should use it, but it works perfectly. So let's just place that back down. Make sure it's back in line again with where you were. You spend more time faffing with where the aperture is than anything else. Let's place that down. I'm then going to take a little brush and I want... Do, 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 I haven't got that here, have I? No. So I want the salvage patina again, which has got those sort of greeny, bluey, tealy colours. And I'm just going to ink my brush and I'm just making sure that's got a good layer of ink certainly don't need the heat tool in my way and then let's just lift that yeah and what I'm going to do is just add 
some of that tealy colour just around the edges. You can add more of the ink, but go, go slowly. You can add more, you can't take away. So just take your time. And what that's doing is it's also sort of decorating the frame a little bit more with the sort of tealy greeny colours, which then you can use that frame for another card. Just holding the frame in place. If you don't want to hold it in place or you have dexterity problems, just hold that in place with some low tack tape just to make it a little bit easier for yourself. So let's just lift that up. A little bit more down there, I think. There we go. So it just gives a little touch more of the tealy green, but now you've got a frame that you really can work with. So we'll save that. We'll definitely save that because we can use that. I don't want to bin that, it seems such a shame. Let's move that out of the way. Do you like I'm trying to work tidy? So I really do feel like a vintage make and something um, a little bit more of a vintage feel. So what I'm going to do is, have we got, what colour is that? So I'm just going to grab a piece of cut and dry foam. And just try and find my colour, which is never the top one. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is let's move all this kitchen roll. I can use that. Don't need to bin that, we can use all that. Let's just place that on one side. So what I'm going to do then is just use a little bit of my frayed burlap distress oxide ink. And I'm just going to start here and just bring in a little tiny touch just around the edges here. So I'm starting off onto the non-stick craft sheet starting way off the not on the non-stick craft sheet and sort of kissing that card with the cotton dry foam there's still ink on the non-stick craft sheet so i can pick that up and just add that to the edges there we go just to distress those edges a little bit and you can sort of bend that card so that it does as you're asking. So what I'm thinking of using, because, you know, I mean, I know we're in September, you know, we're getting into some autumn makes. We've seen a few autumn makes around and I want to use my Garden Times, which has got this beautiful acorn with this floral on the inside, which I absolutely love. So I want to use it so to show you different ways that you can use that. Now, now there's actually an ink called Acorn, so we'll just test that just against the pine cone. It's lovely how there's an acorn ink for an acorn stamp. So let me just, this was the piece that I cut out from the aperture so let's just have a look so that's acorn and that's quite a nice color that is definitely acorn always check the back does it say the colors on the back it doesn't does it it's obviously the one there i always thought it said the colors on the back how funny so if you've got two colors the same No, it doesn't say the colour. Mind you, I could be going blind, no me. My eyesight's not the best these days. Right, so what I'm going to do, do you like I'll just waffle to myself? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the stamp, which is called Garden Times, and it's 979. So let's, and I'm not in a rush today. I just want to take my time. It's too hot for being in a rush. And what I'm thinking is this can be stamped around the background. Which will look rather nice. So let's. I'm just wondering. Mind you, you don't want it too powerful, do you? Do you like how I talk to myself? Right. So what I've done also is I've cut the same square out of a piece of flimsy paper. And the reason I've done that is that when you're stamping, you don't want a ridge. So you need your stamp. To be able to stamp into the aperture without a 300 gsm ridge so it's important that we do that what i'm going to do is ink up more of the stamp than i actually need but we're just going to ink that up and we're inking with our acorn i love the fact it's called acorn so let's just ink that up Again, nice juicy ink pad. And what I'm going to do then is take, I've got a small piece of kitchen roll on time now. Take a bit of this kitchen roll and then I'm just going to dab sort of around the edges, just so that it's a little bit more random. So I've just dabbed around the edges just to make it a little bit more random. Do you know, I thought, have I got the paper on then? So what I'm going to do then is, actually we will add, so we've got those little ones here. Spend more time talking to myself. So I'm just going to press that onto my background. And I'm just giving that time to soak into there. You've got that Distress Oxide Spray which means I'm not stamping onto the white card. So because I'm not stamping onto the white card, it's less porous. So therefore it will sit on the top. I need to give it a few moments just to absorb and then I will have to blot because you've got that Distress Oxide re just underneath. Now this is the background element. So please, please don't stress if you haven't got perfection. So I'm just levering the acrylic block. There we go. So you can see, let's lift this up, that you've just got that in there. I just love the vintage feel. And again, you could use this paper piece in a project because it doesn't matter that it's paper. That doesn't matter at all because you just stick it down, not a problem. Right, so what I'm going to do now, let's, I'm going to faff with the aperture. That's what I'm going to do now. You should know that by now. But just take your time. And I'm going to ink, again, more of the stamp than I actually need because I never know quite where I'm going. So just take your time. And you can see I'm patting that quite a few times just to give a good layer of ink. And if, like me, you, you've moved your aperture like that, don't get frustrated. Just take a little bit of time just to re-put that in place. So we've got this all this stuff in the way. So, so that it looks a little bit different. Let's stamp this here. Now, I didn't dab the edges of this one because I'm only using part. So it's not a problem. And I'm probably not going to press too hard around the edges. So that's why I didn't do the dabbing. Because I'm not sort of tapping around that edge piece much at all. 
So I'm just going to allow that just to soak in. Just give that time just to soak into the card. And it's about not rushing. So I'm just going to lift that and then lift. And then again, curl my acrylic block. And then you can see I've got a little bit more of that vintage feel. So let's place this back again. There we go. Just place that back. Just take a little bit of, sometimes I'm better if I just lift it a little bit, then I can see where the edge is. Don't forget also the edge is a little bit distressed as well, the edge of the aperture. So what do I want to put in here now? Again, I'm going to just ink more of the stamp than I actually need. So just take your time. I'm inking way more than I need. Now, because I'm butting up against this straight line here, I'll just dab a little bit so it's it's sort of a little bit distressed. So then if it touches the other area, it's not a problem. I wasn't concentrating then. So you don't necessarily want the acorn on in every area. You want it to look a little bit more randomly stamped than that. But have you noticed the frame around it? Doesn't it look lovely? So just take your time. Again, I can lever that. Some will go onto my non-stick craft sheet, which is absolutely fine. There you go. But look at the frame around it. Doesn't it look lovely? So let's just get a wipe. And let's just clean up just as we go along, just so that we don't we don't create too much of a, a mess. And then we've got a little area here. Let's have a look when we take the aperture off. You see, you don't necessarily, look at that. You see, I'm going to use that in a project because it, you know, you put it on a card and you add something inside. I think that is lovely. So that is going to be saved as well. So you've got two pieces you can use and stamp more to. Now, let's move this out of the way. You can see that I've left that there because you don't always have to stamp every area. That looks really nice. Now, I'm just going to take a bit of my kitchen roll and I'm just going to take my water brush. Let's move this out of the way. And I'm just enjoying myself. I'm enjoying having a play. That's brown, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm enjoying having a play. So what I'm going to do is I've got water on my water brush and I'm just going to just add a little bit of water just to the floral. Just to, just to lighten that a little bit and let's see if any colour comes off. So let's use this piece of clean kitchen roll there and let's just dab. There you go. You can see that some colour comes out. And what happens is, because I'm adding the moisture, because it's the frayed burlap, it sort of goes more sort of the grey colours as I'm adding that moisture to the flower. So let's give that a few minutes to sit. 
So when you apply the water to the frayed burlap, it oxidises and it brings in some of those grey tones that only happen with the frayed burlap. And you can tell you're removing colour because my water's going brown. So, prove it again. Just use this clean area here. And you can see you're still lifting colour. So let's just... And I'm lifting colour. Just lovely. Just to highlight just a few of the areas. Just to... There we go. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use some clean water. Like so. Pick that up and then you're going to just flick some of the clean water. Now, if you want bl bigger blobs, because I don't want it to go on my card and spritz everywhere on my card, I'll just put it in my hand and just flick some bigger splatters. I'm just going to sort of dab the edge of my card because what I don't want is too much of that ink spreading out from outside the aperture. So that's why I'm just dabbing the outside edges where I've added that water. So where I've sp splat with water, that will also cause a little bit more colour to come out. So let's do a couple of big blobs. That's a professional term, the big blobs. And if I just lift it up, you can see where it's going sort of greeny here because of that frayed burlap. And then it starts to turn that grey sort of blue colour, just so that you can see that. Just love it. So I'm just going to just take a little bit of colour top of the flower so you can see I'm just sort of bleaching areas out that's all I'm doing I'm bleaching certain areas just out there we go and this then is like my my background Absolutely love it. I will sort of add some white touches, but we need to just give that a little bit of a dry. Let's turn that card over. Just so it bends the other way as well. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is place that on one side. We're going to get a scrap of card. Because that's our background. We also want the image in the foreground. So I would like the acorn. I could use that garden text as well. So let's ink this again with the acorn ink versifying Claire. Now I'm stamping onto white card. It's more porous. So it still needs to sort of rest on there just so that it soaks in, but not quite as much as if you've got that distress oxide background. Let's leave it that. There we go. Just look at that for an image. I think that is just stunning, even though I say so myself. Got a piece of copy of paper. I'm just going to blot that. Shouldn't really need it, but I'm just blotting it because I'm going to cut out. Didn't really need it, but there you go. Can't pick my scissors up. So I'm going to take... little acorn 
it's not exactly little it's a really good size and i absolutely love it So I'm just leaving a little bit of a white border. But now, because I've saved those pieces, those frame pieces, I've got the potential to create other cards now. Which I love the added bonus of being able to create other cards. I've got words on there I can use as well. So I'm going to add my sort of acorn. I don't want it there, I want it sort of there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just give that a little bit of shape. So anything that you can use that is soft, you know, mouse mats, anything like that. I don't even know where this came from. I think it was with some tools. Um, I haven't got any fancy tools, so you can use your ball tool or you can use just the scissors. And if I just go around the edges, it sort of causes it to curl. So it gives it dimension. So I sort of go around the edges in a circular motion. And the whole piece then starts to curl and if I just hold it like that you can see that it's domed you can continue just breaking down the fibers gently in your card and if I go like that you can see that's domed I love just adding a little bit of shape a little bit of texture texture makes me makes me happy because then this is going to go here, but I'm going to add a little bit of colour to the floral, or am I? Because it just looks lovely with the pop of white, doesn't it? I could add some little tiny touches of turquoise to the flower. Let me get my... Just get my pens which is easier said than done when you've got so much stuff lying around. So I keep my pens in a cupboard, so I just have to reach for the pens. And what we can do is we've got this, like, sort of, little bit here that you could stick that back together like that and you've got a stencil so you could stick that back together again I might use that in another card right let's get to our turquoises let's have a look that is definitely not a turquoise Tracy what are you turquoise blue let me see if these go. So what I'm going to do is put these colours next to, which I know they'll go with the brown, but I just want to check. So I can use them two colours. Or do you want it so it's more, no, it's too green. But this, I like to sort of experiment that's quite nice. I think I'm going... Mm, do you like how I can't decide? I think I'm going to go for the more turquoisey colours. What colour are you? No, the turquoisey colours. But I would recommend that when you've stamped something, put the colours next to it, then you can see. But if I just... Let me just cut this out. If I just cut this out, I can cut it straight with the cutter. I can then use that and what I can do is use this and stamp something out like the ostrich or a bird and mm, see another project I could stamp a bird inside this which I may do in another video 
So keep all those pieces. Don't be too eager to bin them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Prussian Blue, which is 508. And I've got Turquoise Blue 522. So I'm just going to take the darkest colour and just add a little, little snippet of that colour. Just at the edges. So not too much. And then I'm going to just blend that out with the turquoise blue. And you can see I'm sort of just adding a little bit of the colour. That one I've just completely missed altogether. Just sort of blending the colour with this lightest colour. I'm then going to add some to my non-stick craft sheet. I'm going to have to clean the brush because that will be brown. And then I'm going to blend both the colours with like a wash of the second colour. Just blend that out. And I haven't even gone back to the colour on the non-stick craft sheet. There's so much pigment on there but I don't even need to to worry a little bit more here so I can just let that sort of rest a little bit before we add any of the white and then I'll just touch again with a little bit of the dark and what that will do is there's some moisture in the card so it's starting to just bleed out because there's still some moisture in that card so i'm going to go back to the turquoise and then just make sure where it's moving it's got some of that lighter color as well there we go i can add some white to that soon so I'm going to take my gel pen. Let's just make sure that works because you can end up with debris on the edge of your uh, pen. Let's just add a little bit more. Just take your time. Don't be in too much of a rush to to do anything and if I lift this up there's also an A there for acorn as well just so you can see that I will add some white to that flower I just need to give it a little bit of time just to rest so I'm then going to place this here and I'm going to use my pin flare glue because I don't mind it having a little bit of dimension if you don't want it to have dimension you can adhere that completely flat i don't want that to be completely flat but can you see you've got sort of these dots that have appeared where i, s I flicked the water just onto the card let's just now cut a little bit of the words and other bits out. Oh, I'm going to use that, aren't I, she says. So I'll just stamp some more bits because I'm going to use that other piece. Don't like to, to waste. So let's use some of the text. Do we want the little acorn? Nobody knows. So let's use some of that text. So I'm not cutting out from the other piece I've got because I might use it for a project. That's just me all over. So just allowing that ink, as always, just to 
just to sit on there. Now, I love it when you've got stamps that you can cut bits and pieces out of. It makes me happy. I'm like, there's hardly anything on my desk now, and I mean hardly anything. So where are my scissors? You know where they are, don't you? On the little foam mat. You can't, you can't make it up. So I'm going to take the garden here. So I've got some text then that's got a little pop of white that coordinates with the white around the outside. Got another word garden here as well. If I want to, I don't know whether I'm using it, but I'm just cutting it out so that we've got it and because I'm enjoying myself. So let's just, there we go. So I've got that garden and then we've got the little acorn it's got all the A's in there. So let's just, I mean, for me, I look personally, I love having bit, little bits you can cut out that you can create little embellishments with just to add to your composition. Makes me happy. Just cut that out there so it's actually around it rather than there we go so I've got my little bits and pieces that I can play with so I want that to even that little one I want to have a little bit of shape I'm just going to go around the outer edges just to just so that that's got a little bit of shape as well. Just deciding, because I might put the garden word there, yep. So before you stick anything down, just test where you're going to put your little composition. Yep, so I'm creating a little cluster. I'm going to put a little bit of pin flare just on that one. And if like me, if you like me, you will constantly be touching and faffing and moving everything. That's just me all over. I'm then going to uh, adhesive Tracy. I have my other words. Like so, just the garden here. Just give it a chance to just grab hold. Well, what a surprise. Where's the other little weird now? Well, you can't make it up, can you? I've just chucked it on me. Yeah, I dropped it on myself. Which is what you do when you're getting engrossed. Add the word garden there. Just put the adhesive on there. So what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to make sure that my brush is clean, which as you know it isn't because we did the blue. And I've got these little tiny pans. I think that's magnetic. Magnetic. Um, and they're just, it's got a sheen to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I'm just going to add some little splatters of this green. just to give a little bit of sheen and sparkle, 
which won't show until it's dry. There we go. So I've sort of used every bit of that. There we go. So that should give me a little touch of sparkle. Let's move that little pan out of the way. Normally you would spritz your pans of watercolour with the water just so that they're activated before you even start your demo. But for me, it's got a little bit of sheen. It's going to be difficult for you to see that, isn't it? But it's got a little bit of sheen to that, which is lovely. So what I'm going to do then is just grab where are you, my little bird? So I just want a little bird to add to my project. Plus it just gives that time to settle. So I'm going to use my Bulb Gazette 908 and I'm going to use the little bird off there. I've got a little scrap of card. So I'm going to stamp him in some black ink. So I'll just add some black ink. So I'm going to use my Nocturne ink, the black. And I'm not using an acrylic block. I only need the bird. So let's just add our little bird. Go. And then just cut our little beard out. Again, I'm just going to make sure that I've got a little bit of a white border. Just around the beard. It's definitely drying with a shimmer to the the green. There's definitely a shimmer, which is just lovely. I'm then going to add my sort of my little garden bird, which is going to sort of go here. You can add him if you wish. Just let's have a look at him on top. So if he's got a bit of 3D, oh, it looks quite nice there. So let's add him there. So I need the 3D just towards the, the bottom. And I can just add that there. There we go. And then I'm going to, let's lift that up just so that you can see. I'm going to add some white splatters as well, but I'm just going to add some little bits of white to the floral here. Just here as well, just so that. I'm just going to sort of go around my little acorn just around the edges, just sort of lightly touching around the edges. So let me just... I'm sort of just kissing the card. I will hold this up so that you can see. Just so you can see here. And obviously the gel pen picks up the colour from the oxides because the minute the moisture attracts, it touches there, you can see. It just reacts with that. So I want white splatters. 
Now, if I use my Posca pen, the Posca pen with the moisture will pick up some of this colour that I've got in the background and it will turn it sort of a creamy white. So I want white. So I'm going to use Bleed Proof, Bleed Proof Dr. P.H. Martin's white. I'm just going to use the same piece of kitchen roll because these splatters seem to go everywhere. So let's just make sure that that brush is clean. Now you can add this to a little um, palette and you can reactivate it if you wish. But it's going to last me about 50 years anyway, so I don't need to do that. And then I can just add a few splatters. Just to my card. And then when you've used this bleed proof, I tend to give my brush a really good clean. And that's because it's, it's opaque and you need to give it a good clean because when you come to use it the next time and you've got the white in, it will make the colours cloudy. So I tend to spend a couple of minutes just making sure that that is just clean. That's just me. Because I know what I'm like, you see, I'll just forget. So I'm then going to take my black mat because the black mat will then echo the black on the beard. So we will use that to add the black mat. Again, you wouldn't try to adhere something when you've got lots of wet splatters. I like to make sure I finish the card for you, but in real life, you would not try to stick something down when you've got wet pigment on your card because you're just asking for trouble. You're asking for smudges. So let's just... There we go. And then I'm going to add that to the six and a half inch card blank. Let's grab a piece of clean kitchen roll just to place the card on. Make sure your card is going to open the right way. And the white card just brings vibrancy to your design. Just works really well just to just to add some vibrancy to that design. Let me just check if I've got any words. Let me just pull this off. So I'm just taking a look at my washi that's hash 44 around it's called. And there's just the word wandy. And I often wander aimlessly looking at nature. Because it just brings me a lot of joy. So I'm just going to tear that and then I'm going to add the wander here, which just echoes the black of the beard. I just want the wander, I don't want that bit. So if we lift this up now, there's one thing we've just forgotten. We need to add a little bit of the touches of white. Just 
just to our projects. Just think the little touches of white just make things pop a little bit more. So just add those touches of white. So just sort of reiterating those lines around there. And then if we lift that card up, you can see the card finished. And I really love that. Absolutely love it. So I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration. I can't wait to see your interpretation. And it's been lovely just to create something vintage for a change. Now I can see normally there's things that I would mention like adding shading under here. So let's add a little bit of shading under there. Oh, you see, don't work with things moving, which you know by now, I end up doing things when things are moving, when you really shouldn't. Let's just activate that. Just activate a bit of shading just there. There we go. And then I've got this kitchen roll so I can just dab. Just to add a little bit of shading. And that is your card finished. So I hope you enjoyed that. Love to all. And I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.